welcome. I am Professor Emily Seal, and you are registered for THEA 1030, or Theater Appreciation. We are going into another semester in the pandemic, um, and so I applaud you for showing up. I thank you for being here with us as we navigate this together. It may be kind of confusing for you because I may not be your instructor of record. Uh, that's me, Emily Seal. Um, you may have Brendan Taylor or Phyllis Adams. Uh, those are your instructor of record. I am the lecturer. So I've created all these videos. I've created this introduction to theater class and um, I will be the voice that you hear, but I may not be the one grading your paper or responding to you in the messages or via email. So um, I'm from Franklin County, Tennessee. I uh, was raised in Cowan, that's us in Suwannee. Um, I now live in Tullahoma near the Moore County campus, but I've also taught at the Smyrna site. That's my son, Elliot. You'll hear me talk about him a lot in the class. He's in kindergarten this year. And that's my husband, Davis. He also works at Motlow. So I have an MFA in theater. Uh, that's a terminal degree in my field. Uh, everybody who's teaching the theater class has a degree in theater. Um, but uh, if you're wondering what that MFA is, it means that I have a uh, master's degree in acting for the stage. But I've also costumed perfect professionally. So um, it is a weird time to teach theater uh, because theaters are closed, most of them. Broadway is closed. I don't know about you, but I, you know, watched the ball drop on Times Square and it is eerie and odd not to see tourists packed into Times Square for the ball dropping. Um, so we will rely on recorded videos for your final critique. If you'd taken art, you would have to go to a gallery. If you had taken music, you'd need to go to a concert. And But since you chose theater as your arts elective credit, um, in a traditional semester, we'd pile in a van and all go up to TPAC. Uh, but this semester, we're going to rely on recorded live performance. Um, I've worked closely with Sharon Edwards to create a sort of curated list and libguides. There's a link to that when we get to that big paper at the end of the semester. Um, I have resisted the temptation to re-record every single lecture since the pandemic happened. Partly because if you're like me, you don't want to talk about it. <laughs> uh, is that too honest? Hi, nice to meet you. I don't want to talk about it. But um, uh, I will refer, I, I am apologizing here up front for some of the lectures that may say things like, you need to go see a live production because I recorded this before the pandemic happened. Or I say, you're required to take a final exam. Well, in this semester, we're just letting go of the final exam. You have to take a weekly quiz, but we're not going to try to curate a final exam. Um, because I know for some of you, you have internet instability. For some of you, you have um, life happening in big ways. And so I'm not trying to speak that. I hope all of you are home and safe and cozy. Um, but it is a crazy time, uh, learning in wartime learning in the middle of a pandemic. So uh, Into the Woods is, I have that little graphic up there, James Gordon, Anna Kendrick, um, because this isn't the first time that the theater has seen a uh, plague or pandemic, right? Um, obviously Shakespeare wrote some of his best sonnets during a plague and uh, Stephen Sondheim wrote one of my favorite musicals, Into the Woods, during the AIDS pandemic, right? The first half of the play, we have this um, fairy tale mix-up, uh, but things relatively end happily ever after at intermission. <laughs> and if you're doing the junior version, you know, for a high school or for a junior high, you can uh, end the play at intermission and everybody lives happily ever after. But if we come back from intermission, if you're seeing the full story, then half of the cast is gone after intermission, right? Sondheim just killed off half the cast uh, in order to deal with grieving and grief and loss because he wanted to talk about how AIDS had killed half his friends, right? As a gay man living during uh, the AIDS 
epidemic. So um, I know great art will come out of this. I know theater will survive on afterwards. I know that theater will be one of the ways that helps uh, communities grieve and mourn and deal with the loss that we're suffering right now. So um, I uh, realize this is an awkward semester to be teaching theater, and I realize that it's a strange time to be studying this form, but I have faith that it will live on afterwards. Um, I have a picture of Broadway HD down here because we have these services uh, that are provided through the LibGuides, through the website for you to go and watch a production and critique it, but then you can also rent. So if you look through that list and you don't like it and you've wanted, for example, to always see Kinky Boots, uh, you can go into Amazon and click on a Broadway HD version and actually rent a production you want to see. You can rent rent. <laughs> oh, funny. All right, so um, more information about that in the LibGuides. I'll try to get Sharon Edwards in, in contact with you to help you find a production you want to see if you're still lacking in that. Uh, so let's move on from talking about COVID-19. So. You may have gotten this lecture from another professor, but it's always worth saying at the beginning of the semester that well begun is half done, right? Um, get out those schedules, put them on a calendar or in your phone uh, for alerts. Uh, get out that syllabus, read it thoroughly. Make sure that you have a plan to succeed this semester. Um, make a plan to succeed. Decide now that this is a liftoff day, uh, you're in the airplane, you're taking off, it's kind of a scary time, it's an exciting time, um, but you need to decide now that you're going to set your mind on doing your best work, right? Um, I did an entire communication education certification online, and I did that while working full-time, and uh, it was hard, right? A part of the reason I've recorded these lectures for you is because I recognize that your eyes start to cross from staring at a screen trying to read articles or read assignments. And I think that for me, the, the easiest classes that I took to comprehend the information, not that the class was easy, but the digesting and helping me through, guided through the information were classes with videos, right? So I understand and recognize um, how difficult online learning can be. Um, um, and I know some of you aren't here by choice, right? Some of you didn't want to take an online class, but it was all that was offered this semester in for the classes that you wanted to take. So um, I know some of you may have certain concerns about going into spring of 2021, um, and I'm just asking you to um, frame it for yourself. Make sure you wanna be here, right? Look at those drop dates if you don't wanna be here. Um, make sure you talk to a financial aid counselor before dropping your classes, um, but remember that college isn't mandatory, so um, we want you to be here, but we want you to choose to be here, if that um, doesn't sound like Oprah, if that's not too woo-woo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so here's what happens <laughs> over and over again. Students procrastinate and then they go in and they just take a stab at the quiz and then they say, Miss Seal, I thought that the quiz uh, was something I could take twice or three times or can I take it until the quiz until I make an A? Um, and, and this is a college level class, right? I want you to study and then take the quiz. Um, I we need to keep the standards for the course high. So the quiz, you attempt it once, the grade you get is the grade you get. So please don't just go in last minute, guns blazing, uh, you know, Leroy Jenkins and just blast at the quiz. Take the time, I've listed the terms and concepts to know, make sure that you've looked those up in your textbook, you've read the chapter, you've watched all of the um, supplemental videos attached to the quiz and uh, you know watch the lecture over the quiz and then take the quiz don't just go in guns blazing to try to make the whole experience as quick as you can um, 
So there's two required texts for this course. There's, of course, the, the textbook, which is the Wilson and Goldfarb, uh, 10th edition. Edition doesn't, I don't see huge differences between the editions. If you um, need for money reasons to get a different edition, I just would remind you that when I say turn to page 77, obviously if you have a different textbook, it's not going to be on your page 77. So um, I understand students' textbooks are expensive. Um, but if you do choose to get a different edition, you'll be having to navigate yourself through that process. Um, the other textbook that you have there is by August Wilson. He is a playwright. Uh, he wrote Fences, which was a movie with Denzel Washington. Recently, uh, Chad Bozeman and um, Viola Davis were in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, which is now available on Netflix. That's also by August Wilson um, and directed by the great George C. Wolfe. So uh, August Wilson is a Oscar bait type writer. He writes these beautiful, deep, dark, poetic, meaningful plays. And Piano Lesson is available in the bookstore to buy. It's probably also available in your local library if you have a library subscription. Um, there is a version on YouTube that you're welcome to watch. It's Oprah funded it. It was many moons ago, uh, but you're still going to want a hard copy because you have to use the text to source and cite. So you're going to need to say in Act 2, Scene 1, um, and you can't do that by just watching the movie. So once again, you're welcome to watch the movie, but you'll also need a hard copy of this Pulitzer Prize winning play, which is a beautiful um testament to the black experience in America, which I think is so pertinent now more than ever. So one of my pet peeves, <laughs> if I am your professor, uh, is when students come to me and they say, I'm just not creative. Um, that's really hard for me uh, because creativity is a skill. Creativity is just like if you go and lift weights, you um, get bulked out. If you take a problem and you take a stab at solving that solution, you get better at problem solving. Creativity is a big component in problem solving skills. I just today sent my son back to kindergarten. Um, those teachers have had to be so creative to learn how to teach during a pandemic, uh, especially little wiggling kindergartners, right? Um, on the spot, they have to be creative. They have to come up with ways to engage those students. Um, tons of creativity in America right now showing off. Obviously, these vaccines that are rolling out and these um, wonderful organizers who are helping with this vaccine rollout, right? They're creative. They're reinventing and rethinking the ways that we've done things. So if you're going to graduate from college with a college degree saying, I'm a problem solver, I can take on whatever job you throw at me, um, creativity needs to be part of that. So when you're asked to write something um, creatively in the discussion board when you're asked to draw something please don't come at me with I'm just not an art student I'm not a, you know the, you're in art class right it doesn't have to be a beautiful perfect um, painting you're gonna hang on your wall right this sketch doesn't it's just called a sketch um, but I do want you to apply yourself I want you to try I want you to um, follow all of the directions and give it a good old-fashioned college try all right so what are you getting into? Let's look at it. So there are weekly quizzes. They're every Thursday at 3 p.m. Uh, 3 p.m. because that's when IT is still open. That's when uh, you can still get somebody on the phone at Motlow if you're having technical difficulties. I used to set them at 11.59 p.m. I know many of your professors do. I have students email me and say, oh, I'm so sorry I missed the 3 p.m. deadline. I know I'm so used to my classes having a midnight deadline. Um, but like I said, that 3 p.m. deadline helps with if you're having a problem with the quiz in that moment because at midnight at Motlow, nobody's going to answer the phone. So, um, if you need help with troubleshooting and you need to get a hold of a librarian, for example, putting those quizzes during the day is part of my logic there. So you have, with every module, you have a discussion question where you need to write a post. Sometimes you need to reply to other people's posts, and then sometimes you don't. Uh, I ask in the directions for each 
uh, discussion, you can see whether or not you need to reply to other people's posts. But of course, a big part of the discussion is just engagement and you uh, getting to know your peers, people who might end up being in your community, people who might end up being close friends of yours. We want to try to build engagement as much as we can during this dark time. So um, please engage meaningfully in the discussions and put your best foot forward. So we have an analysis paper over piano lesson that's due at midterm uh, to the uh, software that has plagiarism detection. So I just want to take a moment to mention plagiarism, right? It's on your syllabus. It's a term. There's a writing center link on your syllabus that can help further de define plagiarism. Um, but this paper really should be your own thoughts on piano lesson. I'm not looking for spark notes on piano lesson. I'm not looking for a book report on piano lesson. I want your thoughts, your reflections. So um, please, please, please don't be tempted to take content from the internet in order to write your paper. This is not a research paper. So um, the same goes for your final paper. I want your reflections on the play. Uh, no need to go and read other people's analysis. This is your analysis. So if you have any more questions about plagiarism, uh, give it a goog, go Google it, right? Contact your instructor uh, because it is an automatic zero if the paper is considered plagiarized and that is turned into your dean and becomes part of your academic record. So uh, please, please, please do your own work and don't be tempted to cut and paste from online sources. Uh, we already talked about the production critique in that first one, but just remember there is a second paper and that one's due at the end of the semester. And then that costume rendering, which I briefly mentioned, is due in chapter uh, 9 and 10. So um, there are assignment kind of, we used to call them drop boxes, but um, places to turn in those assignments, those three assignments there. Remember, um, this one's due at midterm, this one's costume rendering is due a little after midterm, and then production critique is due at the end of the semester. I went ahead and gave you guys a week off for uh, what is my holy week, uh, Easter week. Um, you know, uh, officially school isn't even closed until Friday and Saturday, but I do find that uh, there can be a lot going on Easter week, and it seemed like another nice little break in your semester to kind of give you. So... What's in a module? Uh, jazz hands. You want to read your textbook, um, look at the chapter or chapters. So like for your first one, it's chapters one and two, since chapter one is pretty lightweight. So uh, skim the chapter, paying special atten attention to the terms and concepts outlined in your um, listed in the shell. Then you want to go back and watch those videos and lectures. Some uh, weeks when we talk about theater history, for example, are heavily supplemented with videos. And then other times the video is just an example of what we're talking about. In most cases, I would go ahead and watch those supplementary videos before you watch the lecture. If for some reason a link is dead, I've maybe included a YouTube link or something, and it's broken, please send me an email right away so I can fix it. I take a lot of pride in this class and uh, want to make sure that everything is uh, copacetic. So then after you've had a time to digest that content, then go ahead and engage in the discussion board. So I used to get frustrated when I was a student that discussions uh, were only open at certain times. So I haven't done that, um, partially because you may be engaged in a meaningful discussion and then that gets shut down. What I don't want you to do is post a discussion. I had a student once post all of her discussions the first day of class. Um, well, that does tick a little box, but you're not entrenched in the content. So when I ask you, would you rather be a costumer or a scenic designer? If you haven't read the content about costumes and scenic design, then it's not going to be as meaningful as of an engagement. So wait and read the content and then post on the discussion board is my advice. Uh, then remember, three different times you'll have a paper or an activity. And then before you go to take that quiz, remember we don't want to just wing it. <laughs> before we go in to take that 
quiz, go look at the terms, go recheck your checklist, um, and then go in and take your assessment or your quiz, right? 10 questions, quizzes are always 10 questions, multiple choice. I, you know, I like to be creative, but not when it comes to my assessment. I had a little bit of test anxiety uh, as a student, so I try to um, be consistent for you. Always multiple choice, always 10 questions. And you'll get used to, hopefully you'll get used to uh, my question style, my style of um, quizzing and it, it'll cut down on any test anxiety you may or may not have. Last thought, uh, we're all going through this pandemic together, right? Uh, um, you never know what somebody is going through. So um, please, please, please be kind, be considerate, be overly thoughtful and attentive in your communications with your professors, with the students. Um, Take the time to really read what people are writing and um, make sure you're listening before you respond. Um, an example of this is on your first uh, discussion, there's a question about heaven, right? And that is uh, not meant to incite any anger or religious um, fervor or anything. Uh, it's just a hypothetical. The question as it officially asks is if heaven exists. I didn't write that question, uh, and so it's part of this inside the actor studio responses. And so lashing out at someone who says, oh, heaven definitely exists, or heaven doesn't exist, um, especially it can feel kind of trolly, <laughs> right, in, in an online class environment. So uh, I just hope that you can engage meaningful with your fellow students and um, you know please know that this isn't Twitter this isn't reddit uh, this is an, a scholarly class and we want to practice professional communication we want to practice being um, kind to each other and working together to learn together sometimes you can say things in a chat to another student that can help them understand the content in a way that I can't as a veteran theater uh, professor, right? I know this stuff really deeply, which means that sometimes it may be more difficult for me to explain it superficially. So help each other. Please engage meaningfully. Uh, please reach out to us. Um, help us to know what's going on in your life. You know, I had students last semester who didn't tell me that they had COVID until after the semester was over, or they didn't tell me that their aunt died of COVID until after the semester was over. Please don't do that. Please, we are here for you as instructors. Reach out to us. Keep us informed. Uh, we care about your health, and we want um, we want to be engaging. I have students complain uh, that you know they just don't like going to school right now because it's not engaging. Well, please know that that's a two-way street. Our office doors are open. Engage with us um, because it is a weird, isolating time. So. I hope that by the time um, the end of the semester is happening, you know, you feel safer. It's a less weird semester. I'm trying to go ahead and speak all that. Um, but for now, we're just acknowledging for what it is. Um, so remember, this class is asynchronous. You can dive in anytime and start uh, your process on the semester. The first Assessment is not until February because I realize that some of you have trouble getting your books or things, but it is an asynchronous class. All of the content is open right now if you need to dive in and get some of this done in anticipation of other deadlines, uh, timing it out well. So once again, I'm Professor Emily Seal for Motlow State Community College. Thank you for registering for theater appreciation, and uh, thank you for listening.